The second symphony of Mahler, the Resurrection Symphony, Bernstein was able to communicate all these elements, both humanly and musically, in that unique, inspiring manner of his that made him a legend in his own time, to musicians every bit as much as to his audiences. Gerald Newson played Mahler's music with him, as well as other music, when he was a long-time member of the London Symphony Orchestra's double bass section. The thing about Bernstein is I felt he produced a theatre. It wasn't just a concert. And we talk about the great Mahler too. Now, I remember that so well. And a concert is, is about many, many things. It's about the audience, it's about the atmosphere, it's about where it's done. And he topped it all because he creates drama and theatre within himself as much as anything else. Now, a pure musicologist may look at some of the tempos or they may look at some of the dynamics saying, well, it should have been this there, it should have been that there. That to me never doesn't bother me. I don't mind that. The whole thing is the package deal. And I thought it was a gigantic performance set. I think it was a very memorable and one that will really go down in history as a performance. <laughs> And among musicians, it wasn't only orchestral players who were inspired by Leonard Bernstein. Great opera and leader singers also found him mesmerising and profoundly aware and enlightened and wanting to have two-way discussions with them. For this acclaimed baritone singing Mahler's Kinder Totenlieder with Bernstein here, meeting and working with him was a revelation the maestro was nearing the end of his life, although few people realised it at the time, and Thomas Hampson was a brilliant young rising artist. I remember conversations with Lenny as we were doing this. And with Bernstein, it wasn't a didactic process. It was, if anything, parabolic process. It was as a rabbi, we teach a young rabbi, you know, kind of thing. And so it was a lot of discussion. And Lenny loved singers. I think he loved the imagination of singers. He wanted to sing himself. So he was always very attuned and supportive and open to somehow digest what someone as a singer is digesting to inhabit that character. Every poem he wrote, 427 of them, depending on the edition you have, was a cathartic process to get off and out of this catatonic grief of loss and find some reason in it. And this was something that Lenny and I talked about at length. I remember the conversation about this catatonic state of the father, and also this very important line where it says, die Sonne scheint allgemein. 